One of the realities for the Lions, they've been preparing and preparing and preparing yeah. to face Travis Kelsey. Right. So now, two days before the game, you rip up that plan and you come up with a new one. What are we going to do to defend the Chiefs without Kelsey? We do have some resources freed up. What do we do with them? How do we zig when they zag away from Travis Kelsey? So that adds another layer of stress. What if they felt really good about their plan for sure. Travis Kelsey and they've been practicing and they've been honing and they've been thinking about it since the moment they saw that they get the assignment of opening the season against the Chiefs on the night they hang the banner. We got to stop Mahomes. We got to stop Kelsey. We got to have a plan. Oh, we thought of this. Oh, we thought of that. Hey, we thought of this. Oh, sh crap. I'm going to set it. Oh, crap. It's gone two days before the game. And it's good. Good problem to have. We don't have to worry about Travis Kelsey. Bad problem to have. What are we going to do on the fly here to come up with a way to pivot to these other guys? Yeah. And a couple of statistics that I think are very important here. Yeah. Travis Kelsey has 85 career receiving touchdowns. The rest of the Chiefs receivers and tight ends on the entire roster have 37 combined. And this is a great stat. Last year, Travis Kelsey had an NFL high 14 receptions when his quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, held onto the ball for four seconds or longer. Right, there so you go. So he is that security blanket. Right. He is that guy. When all else fails, just throw it to 87. Right. Oh, no, 87 isn't out there. What am I going to do when all else fails? And you know what we may see under those circumstances is a little more of that Mahomes broken field running where everybody else seems to not know what's going on and everything's frenetic and off he goes and just kind of sneaks through the defense for 25 yards. That may be his fallback option for however many games he doesn't have Travis Kelsey, which exposes him, obviously, to injury. And he's learned over the years how to avoid that. But that could be one of the realities. You've got Mahomes going laterally to buy some time 87's not out there, so he just decides I'm going to tuck it and I'm going to get what I can and sneak out of bounds. I mean, that, that, was, that was what set up their Super Bowl berth last year. Snuck out of bounds, got hit late by Joseph Asai, 15 yards, and a game that it felt like they were going to lose, they win. So that may be the way that Mahomes deals with it. If nothing else is there, I'll just take off. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think so. I think they got, you know, that – they, they always are creative with their game plans, regardless who's in the lineup. You know, that, that's an Andy Reid staple, right? Bye week, first game of the year. So I would think they have some different looks and some different things there. And then because of Mahomes, and this is when you're in the same system and, you know, it's the same quarterback for a long, long time, right? A lot of these sets and things they do, hey, Travis Kelsey's the inside of three receivers. Well, they, they got other packages where, you know, a receiver plays that position instead of Travis Kelsey, and he's run some of those routes and, and does, you know, some of those things for, for the Chiefs offense and their playbook. Yeah, it's not going to exactly be the same. Uh, so things are going to be a little different. But to a point you brought up, because, you know, thinking about the game and who I'm going to pick and doing all that a little bit, right? Hey, no Chris Jones, certainly not good. But the one thing I thought of there is just, you know, they, the, the Lions and kind of what you said, they might have been preparing for one thing and now the Chiefs go, wait, we don't have Chris Jones. We might have to play this a little different way on the defensive side of the ball where the Lions maybe aren't going to be as prepared for this new style. I certainly have thought about that a little bit. And then even with this Travis Kelsey injury, right? I think the thing that Detroit's going to have to figure out to what you were talking about, yeah, we have all these packages. We're going to double them on every third and four and third and five. What are they going to do now? I think that's going to be something to watch out for in the football game. Are they going to just play vanilla and play normal defenses? Are they still going to just go to the next suspect? Do they go, okay, let's double Kadarius Toney because we think he'll be the next guy that gets you know a lot of the plays his way? Do you double sometimes – the position on the field, right? Mike, sometimes the defense has a call where they just go, you know, we're doubling the tight end or the inside of three receivers or the slot receiver or no matter what. So, yeah, there's going to be some reorganizing by Detroit's game plan a little bit as well. Uh, and I'll be interested tomorrow night to just kind of see how they attack it. Well, and two other points before we move on. One, you know, 
Patrick Mahomes goes above and beyond to create the right relationship with his receivers, brought them down to Texas, rented a house for them in the offseason, works with them and works with them and is yeah. with them and always taking notes. Andy Reid told you last year in advance of the playoff game against Jacksonville how during those off-season player-only workouts, getting intel from Mahomes on what routes guys like to run and how it all works. Well, no one has been closer to Mahomes since Mahomes became the starting quarterback of the Chiefs than Travis Kelsey. Remember when Texas Tech was in the Final Four in men's basketball and Mahomes was there? Who was right next to him? Yeah. It was Travis Kelsey. Once Kelsey knew what he had in Mahomes, Kelsey became fused at the hip with Mahomes. They're always, not always, but you get my point. Yeah. That's the tightest relationship of any of the two players on the team. And, and that's a dynamic that we can't overlook because who does he have that comfort level with? He may be comfortable with everybody else. He doesn't have the comfort level that he has no, he does with not. Travis Kelsey. And one other thing, too, as you're talking about all the different things that they could do, they could try to double Kadarius Tony, and he's a guy that they think could develop into the number one receiver. And again, he had a knee issue that caused him to most miss most of training camp in the preseason. You got Sky Moore, you got Marquez Valdez Scantling. The Lions have C.J. Gardner-Johnson, yeah. who has proven to have right. great instincts when it comes to go get the ball. And when you take Travis Kelsey out of the mix, why double anyone? Single these guys and let Gardner-Johnson do his thing, where he's just roving around, relying on instincts, go get the ball. Ball's in the air, go get the ball. So I don't know if I'd double anybody. When I got this new chess piece on my defense, which could make my defense better, can't get much worse than it was last year, who maybe can just rely on instinct, film study, where's this ball going to go? How can I get myself in position to go make a play without specifically trying to neutralize any one guy? What do you think of that? No, I, I, I think there's a real possibility that happens, definitely. And then I think, you know, the point to kind of what you're saying there and, and you, you referenced it a little bit, and I wanted to, I should have piggybacked off it. Piggybacked off it is, is his movement and scrambling. Yeah, maybe this is what frees them up to worry about that a little bit. Now we don't have to worry about tra double and Travis Kelsey. We could have a a spy here to watch Mahomes on third and six, so he doesn't scramble for a first down. Do something like that. It's certainly going to add flexibility to their game plan in some of these situations. Um, yeah, yeah, listen, we I've sat here and tried to make a case that they'll still be okay. It's not, you know, listen, it's it's not going to be as okay as it was with Travis Kelsey and the Kansas City Chiefs. I know that. But it's still a team that's got championship merit. It's an awesome offense. The quarterback we know is very special. You know, there is a system that's tried and true there. And they got guys that, you know, can at least – at least support, or not. I don't want to say supplant, but but make up for some of the areas they're going to miss for Travis Kelsey. But you can't you can't totally replace that. We know that, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the Lions do on the defensive side of the ball and how they attack it, and just you know adds another wrinkle to this football game here. We're excited to see the Chiefs hang the banner. They haven't got to do that because the last time COVID was there and all that, and. Man, it's just, uh, yeah, Tony hurt at the beginning of camp. Chris Jones not in there. Now Travis Kelsey. Uh, Chiefs certainly being tested here early on before we play some ball. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.